Welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. And here's your host, Conrad Cushman. Folks, welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans, for the fans. I am your host, Conrad Cushman. With me tonight, we got Derek in the house. Hello, hello. We are not practicing social distancing right now at the moment for this review, (laughs) but uh, I reassure you that social distancing was practiced for the whole show. Uh, We are going to review AEW Dynamite from tonight. Uh, We're going to talk about the March 25th, 2020 edition of the show. Go through everything from the top to the bottom of the card and just kind of give our thoughts on everything. Uh, I don't expect this one to be a super long show, so if you guys have questions, save them for us at the end. But if you guys want to help out everything pro wrestling, there's a few cool ways you could do that. Number one, hit the like button for us. Nothing helps us out more than a nice thumbs up. Uh, why don't we hit it with a nice V trigger? V trigger. Also, you guys can uh, leave me a comment below if you watch this after the fact. I do reply to all comments, so make sure you guys leave me a comment below. Helps more people see the video as well with the likes. Uh, they do the same thing, so helps more people see the video. Leave me a comment. If you're in the live chat, I'm going to give you guys a shout out momentarily. So thank you guys so much for joining us in the live chat. Um, You guys are greatly appreciated each and every week. I look forward to talking with you guys, getting your thoughts on the show tonight. Also, powerslam.tv. If you guys want to check out some free independent wrestling while we're all quarantined, uh, use the code EPWSHOW and you get one month on me. So check out powerslam.tv. That's in the description here on the podcast. It'll be in the description box as well. Check that out. And use the code EPW show one month free of independent pro wrestling. Uh, Support the indies, man. These guys are probably suffering from all of this right now. Oh, yeah, definitely. D, let's talk about some AEW, though. That's what the people are here to talk about. Um, Tonight, we had a different commentary team. We had Tony Schiavone, Cody was on commentary, and uh, Kenny Omega doing a rundown of the show to start it off. Felt very weird tonight. Um, Tony Schiavone is always great, but what did you think of uh, Cody and Kenny on commentary? You know what? I, I actually I appreciate Kenny and uh, Cody. Cody. Cody actually brought like a different dynamic to it. It was, it was more like uh, like laid back conversation all the time. Like like this was just a conversation that they were having all the time, every single day. Nothing different. Nothing new. They just talking like it's a regular thing. Yeah, I actually appreciate that. Yeah, him and Tony are good friends, I know, for a fact. Um, so, yeah, that's that's really dope. I know Tony's from the Georgia area, and so uh, Cody lives out there now, too. So, really cool to see that. Uh, Kenny Omega, even on commentary, it was just something different to hear these guys. So, you got a little different feel of it tonight. I thought they did all right, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. You definitely got, like, a different style from each one of them. M- missed some cues. Um, before we get into the first match of the show, we got to give some shout outs to everybody in the live chat. We've got original Biggie in the house. What's up, OB1? Uh, PR Nightmare is in the house. B Boy Skyline. Uh, Thomas Poster is in the house. Uh, the Ultimate Opportunist. What is going on, man? Good to have you in here for a live chat. Uh, Doug is in the house. Hey, yo. Uh, what's going on, Doug? Doug, I hope that you're not dirty. Because if so, we got some extra hand sanitizer here for you. You know, no no marketing. You know, you got to pay me for that. But we got some hand sanitizer here, you know. Just just a little squirt. And then you do your thing. Do your thing. Rub your hands together like Birdman. All good. <laughs> All good. But let's talk about this first match, D. Oh, Prince Rockstar joined us as well. What is good? Um, Cody versus Jimmy Havoc. Uh, Jimmy Havoc's been on a nice little streak on AEW Dark, if you guys haven't seen it. He is 3-0 and on there, so he, he's built up quite a name for himself. He is featured tonight facing off against Cody. Um, Cody's been building up to this big blood and guts match right now. He's kind of doing lots of little mini feuds. Like, he's feuding yeah. with MJF still in the back of our minds. He's also got something going on with Lance Archer and Jake the Snake. Um, more on that in a second. But Jimmy Havoc here uh, gets his time to shine. Uh, what would you think of this match overall? I thought it was a good it? match. I definitely thought it was a good match. Um I'm glad to see Jimmy Havoc back. I didn't know he was even on dark. I thought he was still suspended, but just to, 
Just to see the, just to see him back. I'm, good job, Jimmy. Stay, stay, stay good, bro. I thought this was a decent match. It, it's hard to describe these matches with the uh, the empty arena feel uh, feeling that's behind it. Excuse me. There's just something missing from all of this, and it's not to say that it's bad. It's just missing that element of fan participation. And I really felt it tonight. Like last week, I could look past it, and this week I was like, ah, I think this would be so much better if people were there because they would get you know that extra momentum on a move, or they'd have something to turn to and be like, yes, these people are feeling this. I like it. Yeah. I know I'm doing stuff right. But um, they they had a decent match in this one. Cody Cody does his uh, overzealous thing again and lands two crossroads. Um. Spike Jimmy Havoc both times. I give him credit for that. They're doing amazing, amazing sell jobs for Cody on that move, by the way. Yeah, they are. Um, two, two crossroads. He picks up the victory here. Jimmy suffers a loss, which I don't think hurts him too badly. No. I know people are going to, oh, he's putting himself over. He's the boss of the company. Look, it'll all pay off towards the end. These guys are the stars. Let them be the stars for right now. Exactly. Uh, I think they're doing good things here. Let us see B-Boy Skyline telling people to like the video, share the video, and spread the word. Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate that. Um, let's see here. Sorry, the game was fun to play. Jordan, you must be tore up drunk from uh, if you played that game Cody was talking about on Twitter. Uh, both prove that JR is a pro, <laughs> Thomas Polster said about the commentary. Like, I think they did all right for where, where they were. Like they, I don't think they've ever done it. They had one really bad transition. I think it comes later on in, like, uh, I think it's the next match yeah. to where they they said they were on fight and they weren't. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, bro, it's still on TNT. We're, we can see this. We can hear you. Right, exactly. But they were trying. Uh, my favorite part came after the match, though. Uh, the Jake the Snake promo. Uh, I got this, like, are you afraid of the dark vibes with the fire coming up? Jake yeah. sitting by the fire in the chair with that raspy-ass voice. Um, Caesar. <laughs> He did, he did a really good job. Um, I call this like the trust me promo. Very similar to uh, his old one. He used to always have that line when he turned heel in like 91. Trust me. But uh, Jake comes out and says he wants Caesar, a.k.a. Cody, to give Lance Archer a match. One match uh, to prove himself. And Cody just looked at it and he was kind of overzealous a little bit at it, like well, the audacity of this dude. Exactly. Um, I, I thought they did well though with this. Jake the Snake delivered a good promo here, and I thought he it it was uh, I thought it was good, dude. He did. Uh, I was also I was also telling uh, telling him that uh, I, it would have been cool if it if they were able to figure it out some kind of way for him to like stay sitting back, and then as soon as he started talking, like sit forward. But then again, Jake's a little on on the uh, shaky side a little bit. So <laughs> I, th- I think I think we did what we needed to do. But no, definitely great promo by Jake the Snake. I appreciate Jake the Snake. I appreciate what he's doing for Lance Archer. This this should be better than what people are probably thinking. I, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I know this is a feud kind of to carry over, but I think you could really make Lance Archer a star here. Yes. By uh, letting things happen. Uh, the Ultimate Opportunist said, what a match tonight between Cody and Jimmy Havoc. So he seemed like he was impressed with this one. Doug says, empty arena shows have been cool, in my opinion, other than Raw. I mean, th- this is what we have right now. There's nothing really to complain about with it. Like I said, my thing was just I missed the fan interaction. And just the, uh, I think it would give the matches a little bit more of a boost. But this is what we got right now. And if this is what wrestling is for a little bit, this That's is what it's going to have to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, PR Nightmare said, no filter, Derek. PR. You gonna pay them fines, PR, because I can't, bro. I can't with him. Uh, what's going on, though, Nelson? Um, yeah. So, let's move on to uh, the next thing here. Cody kind of gets on commentary, and they talk about, will Lance Archer be on the next Dynamite? He kind of makes it seem like he's gonna be there yeah. on the next episode. So, not a bad thing, in my opinion. No, not at all. I... I, I... I would be uh, more than welcoming to see. Uh, I don't know if I said that right. Probably not, but I don't really care. <laughs> I think I think it would be a welcome sight to see Lance Archer because I mean we, we he should have debuted already by now. I think they're doing the slow burn on purpose though. There's a reason why Lance Archer hasn't come up yet. I think they're trying to put him with Jake. Like, look, this is what the story is gonna be. Maybe they figured out, hey, we we can use Jake. We can uh, take advantage of this and make you a bigger star. 
I, I think they have the chance here. I mean, we'll have to see what happens with it. I'm inter- I'm interested to see how we get to the match with him and Cody. I don't know if it's going to be next week. I really feel like they're going to give him a squash match maybe to just make him look strong. Yeah, uh, I, I would honestly... I would until you get to the point where you're talking or you know you have Cody and Lance Archer wrestling. It's got to be all mind games right now because Jake the Snake was great at mind games. So still play into that aspect and play with the mind games until you get to that point where it's like, all right, I've had enough, Lance, me and you, whatever, whatever. Now it could. It's gonna all take its time. Like I said, I don't think there's no there's no reason to rush any of this right now. I think no. double or nothing, honestly, that was going to happen in May. I think it's in jeopardy right now of happening with how everything's been going. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to do the wait and see approach to see what happens. Uh, I don't know what's going to go on with that. But, like I said, we've got nothing but time. Take your time. Develop these characters. I'm interested in Lance Archer, if anybody's listening out there. Um, next, Darby Allen promo. Clap it up, dude. Darby Allen, amazing, bro. You effing crushed it tonight with the promo. Yes. I love the uh, the four masks he came out with with uh, people from the inner circle. Uh, I don't know if he got that table from like a, uh, a garage sale or whatever, but he sets fire to a table with all the masks on it. Uh, he, he did really good in this. I mean, any other thoughts on it from you? Uh, I mean, yeah. Darby Allen's promos are... By far, like, tip-top shape for me. Um, I have yet to be disappointed. Knock on wood. But Darby Allen's put on on great promos. He puts on great shows every time. And then, you know, I also like the fact of he used Kip Sabian as a sacrificial lamb that's in his way to get to the inner circle. I like that. I like that. He he basically set that up too by saying that in the very beginning. So that was a good call by you. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Uh, R Dub in the house. What's going on, R Dub? Uh, he said with everything going on, they could delay that match till double or nothing. Going back to the uh, Cody Lance Archer, that wouldn't be bad as well. And Malik, I connected this one with it as well. He said, "Why does Jake Roberts call Cody Caesar?" Um, the reason he is called Caesar, my good sir, is because Caesar was the king of the land. And I think Cody has taken that uh, the face of AEW, in my opinion. Um, how do I want to put this? Out of all the EVPs, I feel like Cody gets the most face time. Cody seems the most comfortable in that role. I know sometimes his visions and the things he says doesn't line up with what Tony Khan wants. But I think Cody does a great job in being that figurehead for AEW who can go out there and speak there's times where I want to hear Tony come out and lay down the law but I feel like out of all the EVPs Cody's the most outspoken yeah oh definitely um there's really not much to say about it it's just what it is that that's just how that that's just how it mapped out you know Cody mapped it out that way or well I won't say he mapped it out that way it just fell in his hands that way can't can't do anything about it it's just gonna be what it is Let's talk about this match, though. The uh, super bad Kip Sabian with uh, his bad girl, Penelope Ford. Joe, you disappoint me, bro. <laughs> Yo, chill out with that, bro. <laughs> that, that that goes way back. They were having some stuff go on with that. Joe, you're still the man in my mind. He is, but he just disappointed me with this one. <laughs> so it's Kip Sabian versus Darby Allen in this one. Um, these guys were kind of going hard, I thought, for nobody being there. Yes. I, I respect it, though. Two of the uh, young upstarts in AEW. Dude, Darby's got something. There's there's magic with this dude, I'm oh, telling yeah. you. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's got a big future ahead of him, big opportunities. Uh, they did some great things. This was the match where Cody thought he cut to a commercial break, and he didn't. So, botch. So, that'll probably be on Botchamania coming up. But, uh it, all good. They were still on TNT. Cody and Tony Schiavone just talking, shooting the shit, doing their thing. Uh, not mad at it at all. But this match, you were you would expect that. So they were going so hard that I thought Darby would you know win with the coffin drop. This yeah. falls right back into the same lines that we always talk about, Derek. They uh, they win with a different move. Darby wins with a move called the Last Supper, which was kind of weird. By the way. Never liked the word supper. Don't know why. It's one of those weird things with me. Yeah, no, I, I'm right there with you, bro. The first time I heard that, I think I heard it in like, uh, I think I, I think I heard it in like 
Tombstone. Like I've I've heard it before that, but I never really paid attention to it. But then when I heard it, like fully heard it, I'm like, what the hell is Supper? <laughs> I don't know. I never liked it in Catholic school either. Yeah, <laughs> Just like, saying. <laughs> like yeah, like like I knew about it in Ca- you know Catholic school because we went to the same school. So it, like you know they, they always talk about like the Last Supper and all that kind. I never really paid attention to how, you know the word itself, and then I finally like paid attention to him. Like yo, you use supper for like every, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Eat your supper. You ready? Ready for supper? What? <laughs> Just a trash word, guys. I'm gonna say it. Um... He was now. Some people are probably wondering what is the Last Supper uh, for a finisher. He sets it up like a sharpshooter and then goes into a pen. Like, dude, your legs were pretzel. I couldn't see how someone would get out of that. Yeah, and then then like as he does that, he kind of lays on top of you, so you're kind of just like wailing your arms around and stuff like that. It's like you can't really do anything, so you have no other choice but to succumb to that pen. I think that nice use of the word succumb. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the childish laugh there. <laughs> I've been quarantined for too long. Quarantined for too long. Uh, <laughs> stop, 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 stop. You're killing me. You're killing me. The, uh, the, that move, I think, could be kicked out of by, like, a Jake Hager or somebody. <laughs> like, because uh, he's bigger, you know? Well, that's true, yeah. I mean, I mean, not, not it, I, I don't see, I don't I, let me correct myself. I shouldn't say that that's a move that, you know, you have to be pinned. Like, you, you can't get out of it. Like, if someone has the the upper body strength to do it, yes, it, it's possible they could do it. Nice, nice. I've, I've seen some good things in the uh, chat. Let me go back to Malik Murray's question. Malik, I'm trying to keep your questions uh, in line. If you guys have questions, save them for the end, though. I promise you we'll answer a few because we're going to probably finish this earlier than we usually do. Uh, Malik says he's got a question. Why doesn't Darby Allen? Why isn't Darby Allen going for the AEW World Championship? I th- he's got a, to me. He's got a personal vendetta that he has to settle. He has to pick apart the inner circle before he. And then also on top of that, he's really not really focused on that. I, I think I think he's trying to battle the underlings to get back to that. Like he has a mission. He's like I have to go through all of them if I want to get to that. Yeah. And I think he's more focused on doing that. And the, and the personal vendetta with the inner circle is, you you know, you almost took my, my, my voice box out of commission. So it's like, you tried to end my career, so now I'm coming for all of you. Right? Like, I feel the same way, though, like, as far as him getting to Moxley. I mean, we all saw, we all saw that paradigm shift off the, the middle rope. I don't want to see... Darby Allen end again, bro. Um, but good stuff, though. Good question for that. Um, let's see here. Uh, the ultimate opportunist brought up my next point. Sean Spears, Billy Gunn, um, Austin Gunn, Dasha, Fuentes. There were a bunch of people back there, like, betting on the matches, talking crazy. Uh, it was weird to see them in the trailer this time. I would have much preferred to have them, like, scattered in the arena. You know, I, I think I think it would have worked. We, we would have felt the way we felt about this show like we did last show because they had people out there even even just for the fact that it was just more of the staff members and the and the wrestlers that were out there it still gave it an essence of like you know that that was a great move that was bs whatever people just talking mess yeah, yelling like, stuff i mean we did have one funny line which will come up later on but uh that somebody yelled out that you caught immediately <laughs> but we'll, we'll get into that momentarily. But like I said, I thought this was a fine match, though. I thought these guys went, they gave you the extra mile that they needed to in this one. Definitely. Uh, Doug said something else we have in common, Catholic school. Yeah, Doug, we'll share some uh, bad stories one day yeah. for you about that. <laughs> um, are Rob and Donnie well and healthy, and are they staying at their homes? Uh, I assume so. Rob said he was coming, but... You know Rob. Rob's just a whisper in the wind. Yeah. You'll never, you'll never know if he's showing up. Um, I, I assume that they just stayed at home for, uh, you know, quarantine purposes. But I talked to them. They don't seem like they're sick or anything. So they are good, Thomas. Thank you for asking. Uh, Malik asks, what if Spears and MJF become a tag team, and what if they make Kenny Omega turn heel? I would love to see. Uh, Ring of Honor Rush. Roosh? Oh, I would love to see Roosh. From Ring of Honor? Yeah. Um, I, That's not a bad point, Malik. I, I don't see... I think MJF's a single star. Yeah. 
I he, think has, he has to be. He has to be a single star with goons. And Kenny Omega to me is a main eventer still. Yeah. I don't think you need to switch him out. And I think Sean Spears is going to be a guy who helps elevate next level talent. So I see Sean Spears as a top level tag performer or a uh, a mid level performer within the company. With all due respect, trying to say, <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't want to yeah. call him a mid carder, but that's that's what he's there to do. He can help elevate other guys and teach them things that they don't know yet. Right. Because I mean, he's, he's kind of up there in age, right? Uh, no, I think he's about our age. Is he? Yeah, in his 30s. But he's doing fine where he's at. Yeah. Uh, let's get to the next match. Jake Hagar versus... Uh, was this dude's name Chico or were they just calling him No, that? I think his name was Chico. I Somebody wrote Chico down here in the notes. It was me, but I'm like, yo, I don't know if this dude's name was Chico. Uh, he was. It, it was either Chico or like Chizo or something like that. Or like Chizo or something. He, he was a local talent. Uh... I, I don't know here, man. Uh, this dude got squashed, basically. Yeah, you know, it's it's they they had to do it. I, I think was was this like the first squash match for AEW? Well, see, they have them on dark, so sometimes you might miss those. Like yesterday on dark, Derek doesn't watch dark. I do uh, sometimes. Well, you missed this one. This so, one, I know. I missed so the last couple. They had all guys from like the independent scene to help get them paid. Basically, they're like, oh, come on man. out and we'll do matches with you guys. Not they all came out there and put over the AEW people, but. You never know. Could be a job in the future. I was really impressed by uh, Sugar D. I thought he did a really good job on uh, Dark last night. Um, Jake Hager, they give him a video package showing what he's done in Bellator. He's been whooping ass. He's a great wrestler from Perry, Oklahoma. Uh, he is the Oklahoma. Uh, that's for B-Boy Skyline. He'll know where that's from. Um, Jake Hager does an excellent job, though. He wins the match quickly with a standing triangle. Quick work of the dude. Uh, easy win. But afterwards, Moxley just randomly walks out. He just walks out with the swagger, with his uh, roll in the shoulders, and he comes out there ready to fight. Uh, Hager sees him, and for his troubles, he eats a paradigm shift. But he also got up after that and tried to catch him in an uh, ankle lock. Not Ken Shamrock style, or Christian. Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. He... Where is she? <laughs> Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Okay, Doug says Chico was his name. Chico. Okay. Yeah. She. <laughs> I knew it. Um, could be dope. Could be dope. Uh, Prince Prince Rockstar says Sean Spears and Rusev. I wouldn't be mad at it, bro. Not at all. Um, and B-Boy Skyline said, yep, so he knows where the Oklahoma is from. So, afterwards, they, they got to a little bit of a brawl, but Jake Hager takes the powder. He walks out the ring and heads to the back. Um, do you see Moxley defending the belt against him eventually? Like, I, I would say so. I would say so. They, I think I don't think this would be a ranking match. I think this would more so be... Moxley just calling out Jake Hagar. So you think it'll be like a non-title? See, I got you saying Hagar now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he, he might end up uh, calling him out and doing what he's got to do for it. I think we're going to see a match between these two, though, in the near oh, yeah. future. Yeah, definitely. And like near future, like ASAP. So uh, let me see here. Let me fix my last comment. Chico was his name. Oh, I almost said that, but I would have definitely blamed my son for the reason why I started singing like bingo and stuff like that. You guys definitely don't ever want to hear me sing those songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get into the next promo. Brody Lee, a.k.a. the former Luke Harper. Uh, really good to see him in AEW. I thought he had a tremendous debut last week. Uh, we talked about all the little things that people noticed, the uh, the little tribute kind of to Bray Wyatt for, with the sister Abigail. Yep, yep. Um, he, he did tremendous things. So we get the promo from last week of them highlighting like, oh, he is the exalted one, him in his cloak and all this other mess. And it's the exact same promo we've been seeing kind of on their YouTube channel and everything else. So make sure you guys subscribe to AEW's YouTube channel. And afterwards, you see all that, but my favorite line from the promo is, Christopher Daniels, you're not the first old man who doubted my, uh, what did he say, uh, doubted, doubted my abilities? Yeah, yeah, something, something to but, the, the, that effect. And he said, but you'll be the last. And I love it, I love it, it was great, and then he took his head off. Yes, yes. 
Um, and the Vince McMahon references did not stop there, Derek. Uh, not we, at all. We, we, we get to a scene of Brody Lee backstage having uh, some dinner. And I'll kind of let you, you talk about the steak part here. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I apologize. I do not mean this in an offensive way at all. But why do some people hold their forks the way that he held his fork? That 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 has to be like the most. I won't say that, but that had to be like the weirdest way to hold it. Like that that looks so uncomfortable. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to start a how do you hold your fork challenge for AEW, but Listen. I might if we stay quarantined for longer <laughs> than anything. I'm seeing rank this, do this. I'm like, yo, how long? How how do we hold our forks when we cut steak? But then again, I don't know. I mean, I hold the kind of like pitchfork style, like, like I'm like like this, and then I'm doing that. Yeah, but I mean, he was more so like, yeah, it looked. Weird. I don't know, cause 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 when I when I do it, I got the fork like this. So, yeah, yeah, with the one finger on yeah, top. Yeah, with the one finger. So like watching other people do it and then holding it like this, I'm like, that looks so weird and so uncomfortable. Now, there's some people in the live chat who were in the Facebook group. Some people were saying that this was a shot at Vince. I don't know if Vince cuts his steak like this and he was trying to make fun of it because this was a different Luke Harper. And I wish Casey was in here right now because he always wanted to see Luke Harper in like this JBL type gimmick. We talked about this uh, a bunch of times. And... You finally got to see what he would kind of look like. And he's wearing a suit. His hair is kind of put back in a nice ponytail. And he's just eating this this beautiful food. They have like steak, broccoli, potatoes. He's eating fat. That's what he's eating. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Reynolds and John Silver are sitting at the other ends of the table. And they're not eating anything. He's basically chastising them. Yeah, dude. Like an <laughs> abusive father. Like he said, you cannot eat until I'm done eating. And if you guys have ever heard some crazy ass WWE like creative stories, Vince McMahon would make people on the creative team watch him eat and they could not eat like during it. Could you imagine that shit? Like, bro, listen, I'm a big brother. And Vince McMahon ain't gonna tell me I can't eat. I'll go over there and snatch the sandwich off his plate. Like, listen, bro, I'm hungry. Right. All right. You ain't telling me I can't eat. Exactly. But Brody Lee does that and um I can't remember which one of them walked away. One of the two guys in the tag team walked away. It was uh, the first one was. Um, was it John Silver? I think John I think it was Silver. John Silver that got kicked out first. Yeah, so he ends up leaving, and Alex Reynolds sitting there. And he was like, "You better get your boy and tell him <laughs> what's up." And he's as he's sitting there eating steak, and he does like the fat breathing, like while you're eating it. The. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> That's how you knew that shit was good. Um, and then, oh, and then we got the sneeze at the, the table sneeze, after. Yeah. Dude, so someone sneezes. Another thing that people say Vince McMahon hates. I've even heard today that, like, Donald Trump hates it, too. It's yeah. a thing that, like, pisses some people off. That doesn't bother me as much. If you got to sneeze, you got to sneeze. Yeah, but I listen, everybody's got their thing that bothers them a little bit. Like, people chewing with their mouth open. Shit like that drives me nuts. Listen, I work with I work with a guy... Who does that? Now, granted, he's got sleep apnea. <laughs> what does that got to do with how you eat? <laughs> Bro, when he eats, it's... <sighs> <laughs> going to work. <laughs> you only Listen. took one bite, bro. <laughs> I that ain't going to work. <laughs> That's trying to inhale and chew at the same time. <laughs> And can't breathe. Okay, so I get it. Maybe the sleep apnea yeah. plays into. All right, all right, that's yeah. fair. I was like, that has nothing to do with eating. <laughs> but yeah, everybody's got their quirks. But Vince McMahon is sneezing. Sneezing is something a person can't help. No. So it's so weird. So could you imagine, like, people probably hold in their sneezes around him at like creative meetings and stuff? I don't know if you're gonna like pop a blood vessel in your eye doing that or what. Fun fact: you can, you can. Well, it's not fun, but you definitely could. Uh, it cause yourself like a brain hemorrhage by like holding it. Oh, note to self: don't hold your sneezes. But th Check these these were all little shots at Vince McMahon, and um, I thought I thought it did a lot of good for him. It did. Um, I actually liked seeing him dressed up like that. Like I, I like the the old style, you know, back when he was in the Wyatt family. But I like this new style now. This new style is new. Like he went somewhere new, they gave him something new. I appreciate that. You keep up with it. See, my man Prince Rockstar knew about Vince hating people that sneezes, so he knew that one already. Um, 
let's see here. Malik Murray said, I thought Brody Lee was about to kick the shit out of John Silver. Uh, how long do you think uh, before he goes for the AEW World Championship? I, th- I think he challenges pretty quick. Oh, so you think he's going to be in the top five mix soon? Yeah. I think mm. he challenges pretty quick. Because you, you had you had the buildup for this for a good amount of time. I think he I think he forces his way into it. I don't think it's more so the wins. I think he forces his way into it. I think too he's on the older side. He's he's a little bit older than us and he's trying to get his time in in wrestling. You his bump card's only got a few like there's only so many punches in it. He knows that it's coming up soon yeah. where it's like, "All right, bro, you got to do something now." So, he's trying to make these moves happen. I support it, man. I do too. Um, he takes on QT Marshall in a match. This is his first match, technically. Squash. We all know when we see QT Marshall and that damn apple, we know he's about to get his head taken off. QT Marshall is out there, and uh, he ends up getting caught with all of the signature moves thrown around the ring. They make freaking Brody Lee look like a beast. Uh, he gets caught with the Sister Abigail tease into the Discus Lariat, turning QT Marshall inside out for the one, two, three. That's it, man. I, I don't think there's anything else that we really need to say about this segment. They really oh, yeah. oh, put him and, over. And they uh they, they basically stood over him and dropped the uh Oh the mask on him after. Order ma- mask on him. Yeah. Do you think the Dark Order needs to get bigger? And I'll put this question to the chat too. Does the Dark Order need to expand itself still? Or do you think like I don't know if you have two tag teams in there right now. Do you need more? Eh. I, I think I think they need to grow, honestly. Because I mean who, of significance besides Evil Uno and um, Stu Grayson. Stu Grayson, who do you really have? And, and and Brody Lee. Like besides those three, who do you really have? I feel like Alex Reynolds and John Silver could turn. I think you could make them into baby faces by having them turn on them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so you do that, and then because it, it, it this whole segment here is basically like, you know, I'm I'm shitting on you because you guys fucked up. Right, that could be just. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> Nelson's about to get after me for that. Uh, yeah, no, no, it makes sense what you're saying though. With that, as far as they they've been messing up, they haven't been doing their jobs properly, and when it's time for them to get wins, they don't. Right. But um, remember, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson are the number one contenders for the tag titles. That's got me worried a little bit too. Coming up yeah. in the future, yeah, with uh, a lot of things. But we'll see what happens with it. I think you can kick those two out, Alex Reynolds and John Silver, and find some single stars who need it yes. a little bit more. Yeah. Just some guidance, uh, even if they're on dark, trying to pick up victories or whatever. I, you know what? And I would even I would even do that. I would go down to, to dark and just kind of start recruiting people from there. Cause yeah. it, and if you recruit the people who are actually putting on great shows, but don't take the people that you know that will come up to uh, the main card. To and Dark's gonna be going away possibly soon. We're, we were supposed to get a second show right. from AEW. When does that happen? Nobody knows. Uh, I can't promise reviews of that show or anything else. Someone said it's supposed to be like Dark, so it, we're gonna have to wait and see what happens. We get an update next on Nick Jackson. Nick Jackson was taken out by the Inner Circle. Uh, Cody made me laugh during this. Who who put this picture up? We couldn't <laughs> find a better picture of Nick. He's got blood coming from his mouth. You know, he's sticking up for his. Uh, fellow elite member and uh nick jackson they basically show the beat down for him and just basically say he's recovering right now at this point um (laughs) shout out to tony shivani too for trying to stick up for all this did a really good job here um we get an update on that but he's not going to be back in time for blood and guts it looks like um the real reason he just had a baby (laughs) or he's having one i don't know if he had it or not i think i think they had the baby Maybe. I, I don't know. I'm not in his business, but I know his wife was pregnant, and that was part of the reason why they took him off TV. So show him some love when you see him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, AAA title next. The main event. We had Sammy Guevara versus the champion Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is AAA's mega title holder at this point. Um, this was good. This was match of the night, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, definitely. For uh, what they did here. Sammy Guevara, Kenny Omega, Stole the show, um, just basically showing out. I, I know the effort was there for the other guys, but I expected it more so from these two. Yeah. And they went balls to the wall. Definitely, uh, they did. They, they definitely uh, put all all the stops 
to put on a good show in strenuous circumstances. So my favorite spot in this match has to be when uh, Sammy is on the outside and he hops over the barricade and he usually has those little drawings. Well, this time for the drawings, <laughs> he had pictures. I think one was of Brandy. I can't one remember. Was Chris Jericho. Jericho. And there was another stupid one out there that I can't think of at this moment. Oh. I can see it. I can. But the best part was Brandy. So he gets on the outside eventually during the match, and he hops over the barricade right before commercial break. He <laughs> ends up making out with, like, the Brandy poster, and he is going to work on this thing. Uh, it's like the classic, you know, when people used to do, like, the turnaround. Yeah, yeah, turn around. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and uh, he was going in on this thing, and uh, someone shouted that you heard the background. <laughs> Listen, when <laughs> before they went away, all you get... Correct me if I'm wrong, go back and listen to it, but it definitely sounded like someone was like, more tongue! <laughs> he was like licking the poster, <laughs> and it's just a drawing of Brandy. It was disgusting. Uh, I'm surprised Cody didn't come down there and beat his ass. Brandy's face was like disgusted right. at the same time in the background. Um, oh, I, I think Cody was like, oh, come on. Now, uh, R-Dub is agreeing with Match of the Night for us, um, and he also says the same thing here. Sammy looked great in this match, and definitely, definitely, and we're, and we're gonna get to that. a lot of people are saying match of the night. So they go back and forth. Kenny Omega wins with the one winged angel. Um, Credit to uh, Tony Schiavone for saying it correctly. Yo, thank you, Tony, because I was so sick of hearing one winged angel <laughs> for weeks. Uh, I, I just don't know if that's how people want to say it or what. I, th- I think that's how they want to say it. I think they want to say it that way because it sounds like it's more devastating. <laughs> Listen, the first person that kicks out of that move, they're going to be a made person. That move is going to be protected like Triple H's pedigree for years, bro. Oh my God. I remember that. Sh- Nobody kicked out of that shit for a long time. Like, if you kicked out of the pedigree, some shit was up. I was like, yo, did they botch? <laughs> <laughs> What happened there? But uh, they, they did a really good job. I Like I said, match of the night for this one. Kenny Omega yep. retains the AAA Mega title here. Uh, Sammy looked great in defeat, like R-Dub said. So definitely. props to R-Dub. Uh, definitely knows what he's talking about. Make sure you guys show him some love. And the Run the Ropes crew on Facebook. Amazing group. Uh, let's see here. Malik Murray says, so MJF and Cody's rivalry is finished now? No. no. No, I think that this could have a pit stop possibly with Lance Archer at the next pay-per-view, but I feel by all out that time period, August, that we're going to be back to seeing them uh, feud. I think they're just dropping subtle hints right now for what's going to happen. And I think this is more so people throwing stones at the throne. Right yeah. Now. And shout out to Cody Rose too, for his uh, Star Trek references. I, I heard what you were saying up oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> um, oh that's, that's who it was. It was, it was it was somebody from Star Trek. Uh, was it? It wasn't Spock. It was I think it was Picard. Picard, yeah, because that's Cody's favorite. Yeah. That's his boy. Yeah. So, listen, I'm not mad at it. Good memory to remember that because I definitely <laughs> forgot all about that third picture already. Prince Rockstar says them fake reactions, uh, uh, like they were watching the Super Bowl, not a wrestling match. Doug put one winged in the chat. Uh, absolutely, whoever kicks out of that is an instant star. I agree, R. Dub. They protect that move in New Japan, and I love it. And they're going to protect it here as well. Um, but Matt- the, mo- the moment you let someone kick out of it, and either show is the moment you have to let it be universal. No, I think I think not not on a regular basis, but it ha- you can't go from. AEW to someone kicking out of that and then go to New New Japan and then nobody. Well, someone out. has kicked out of it in New Japan, but it made them a star, but it was only one person. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, the only person I've ever seen kick out of that is Okada. Okay. So, like I well, said, respect. Well, and Okada's like the, the yeah. great, and they were having a great match at the time, so couldn't be mad at it. Yeah. And the, the feud was based on if Kenny Omega hits this move, it's over for him. Okay. All right, yeah. Good breakdown of that. Hopefully, we get some New Japan soon, too, man. I've been missing my New Japan. My heart hurts a little bit. Uh, I had to put up a Wolverine picture of him, whole, like, touching the New Japan logo. <laughs> like, I missed it. <laughs> I got a lot of likes for that, though, so that was dope. Um, I don't know who originally made that, but props to you. Uh, let's talk about the main event segment of the night. It was Chris Jericho and Matt Hardy. Folks, I'm giving... 
Huge props to Chris Jericho. This dude's a legend. Period, point blank. I don't want to hear it from anybody. The man cut a promo on a drone tonight, and I was, like, into it, bro. Yes. Like into he, it. Like, he was, like, like, having a legit conversation by himself with a drone that was not talking back. And I was sitting there watching it, and about, I would say, like, 75% through, I'm like, dude, I'm watching Chris Jericho talk to a flying drone. What the hell am I doing right now? But I was entertained. I was engaged. Um, and, and you can you can feel like how in tuned he was with the promo. Like he was like, I'm I'm all in on this. So this is what you're gonna get. Shout out to uh, Sick who joined us as well, and my man JPQ from No Particular Angle. If you guys want to know about stardom, check out No Particular Angle podcast. Uh, he just uploaded a great episode today, so give him a subscribe. Tell him EPW sent you. Uh, this was amazing. Chris Jericho cutting the promo on the drone. He went to work, called him a son of a bitch, all types of things. Said he didn't like his political views, but he tried to get him to join the inner circle. The drone bounced. He said no. Matt Hardy then shows up. <laughs> Yo. They had Matt Hardy teleport. So, Derek, what, what did you think the instant you saw a teleportation happening with Matt Hardy? The, the the first teleportation caught me off guard because I think I looked away for like a split second. So, I'm like, wait a minute. What the hell just happened? <laughs> but then when they started doing it, I felt like it was like what made me when they started doing it. What made me look was at uh, Chris Jericho's part where um, it looked like Chris Jericho like, was just standing there. And it, it, it looked like that was like a still. And they were just like, here, nah, here, here, here. I'm like, I, I could have did, did without that. No, nah, I thought that was great. That, I mean, it, 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 was, it was good. I, mean, I was just like, I ah. think the Matt Hardy stuff, you're either going to love it or hate it. Listen, Matt Hardy's part of the reason why I started watching Impact again because of this gimmick. Like, some people said they hated it so bad. I remember this on Twitter. They were like, I hate this thing so bad that I, I, I'm done with this. And other people said this shit is gold. So I had to check it out, and I actually enjoyed it. Like, I just thought it was so over the top that it was good. So that's how I feel with the, the Matt Hardy stuff. If you're gonna, You're either going to like it or hate it. So, so sometimes I feel like when you watch him do it, like what he's like saying there, like, like I feel like he wants to talk at like a certain point, but he's like, <laughs> I can't talk just yet, <laughs> not yet. He's got to keep it going, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> like he gets caught up in it, he's like, I, I can't think of what I'm saying, trying to want to like what I want to say now. I got to stay here for a minute. Um, where where are we here? The uh, oh my goodness. Couldn't read what I just wrote. Uh, so I gave this a good promo once Matt Hardy got out there, and they they went back and forth on it. Jericho's trying to get him to join the inner circle. Jericho tries to butter him up. Matt Hardy's not going forward. He goes on all these random rants about Abe Lincoln being out there, Maximilian, uh, you Martin know, Luther King. D- yeah, uh, Matt Hardy's gold in these. Go back and watch this. I highly recommend it. I'm not doing this justice by just talking about this. You need to go back and see this. Yeah. And afterwards, it all ends with Jericho saying, are you inner circle or are you elite? And Matt Hardy yells, delete. And then he goes, inner circle or elite? Delete. Inner circle or elite? Delete. Elite. Delete. Elite. Delete. And he just kept going through. He was like, all right, that's it. That's it. (laughs) And Jericho uh, said he was going to knock some sense into him, slaps Matt Hardy across the face. Matt Hardy responds back with a right fist, knocks Jericho down. And he said, oh, my goodness, you are something different. And then he said, but you know magic, but so does Chris Jericho. And he said, Abracadabra and Sammy Guevara comes from out of nowhere and attacks, like the little slimy shit that he is. (laughs) He attacks Matt Hardy, knocks him down, and they begin jumping him. Uh, But... Remember, who was on commentary this whole time? Cody and Kenny. And I love when he was disrespecting the elite. He was like, dude, we're right here. Like, we can hear you. <laughs> exactly. And uh, they run down with steel chairs to make the same classic baby face move. Uh, it's three on two, so they have to retreat. And Matt Hardy in the end is doing the delete, and fire is coming up. So Jericho looks like he almost gets his hair singed. Yeah. Like, holy shit. And they run off. But Matt Hardy gets this cool visual effect of him doing the delete. And the fires coming up and, like, all the lights and pyro being on him. It looked really cool at the end, how they ended the show. Definitely. And we cannot forget, because I, I just thought about it. We, we breezed past it. 
Chris Jericho definitely had the cameraman singing, and the cameraman was definitely into the song. Kudos to that man. You know he used to be at home in his tidy whities Yo, chill with that bad <laughs> visual, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying. Tidy whities Freaking like a beer on the table. Dirty socks. Just playing the air guitars. <laughs> singing all kinds of rock songs. Terrible. Terrible, terrible that you even brought up dirty ass crusty socks <laughs> on this podcast. Um, but I'm just saying, I give him all the respect in the world because he he definitely hit that song. Like even with nobody being there and being on live TV and still singing, not giving a shit. Kudos, bro. Kudos. Live chat. This show, thumbs up or thumbs down? And I know I've got some questions highlighted that I'm gonna go back through and answer momentarily. I I, st- I still have a thumbs up. It I can't say it was a bad show because we're in the circumstances that we are in. So you can't really say it's a a bad show unless if it's really a bad show. You can't. Yeah, to me it's a thumbs up. I agree. I, I'm going to give it a thumbs up as well. I thought they had enough on here that kept me interested. Yeah. Despite what we got, and it's nice to have entertainment during these uh, stupid ass quarantine times. I get that it's for safety, but it still sucks. Yes. Uh, let me see here. I'm waiting for the chat to throw it in. Uh, we got a thumbs up from Doug. Our Dubs giving it a thumbs up as well. And yes, I'm going to explain some of that stuff momentarily. Thomas Polster said thumbs up. Uh, sick. I'm going to get into what you said because I do want to address that in one second here. Uh, if you guys have questions, like I said, line up a couple of them for us and then uh, we'll get ready to head on out of here soon. But Sick comes in with a question. He says, question, do you think people like Vince who own and promote wrestling uh, kicks themselves when they release talent they didn't believe in and they go somewhere else and blow up? I think so. No. I don't, I, I don't think Vince per se, but other companies, yes. I don't think so. I think Vince McMahon does not give a shit because he thinks that he can offer you more money and he'll make you a star because you did it somewhere else. He's like, yeah, I'll bring you back. Come on. Work for me now. Now I'll make you a main eventer because you proved yourself somewhere else. It's been like the recent WWE model. Like you, you guys remember back in the day, they would not do that shit ever. They'd be like, once you're gone, like we're going to rub, we're going to get the stank off you and do it. But Vince will bring you back, give you a quick push. And then all of a sudden he'll just kind of push you back down the card. You'll, like someone like Luke, Har- Luke Harper, if he came back, he would never be Vince's main man. No, he, he would just be a side person. He, to Vince. He, he'd be fighting on main event at at best when he first came back. Maybe Intercontinental title again. Yeah, they know what they're doing. So I don't think Vince does per se. Maybe other companies do though. Like think about it. When WWE lost EC3 and he went to Impact, EC3 was a star. I'm not gonna front. Like they made him a huge star. WWE signs him back. What have they been doing with him? Like, it's the most disappointing thing to see. Very disappointing. Uh, let's see here. The uh, Did Matt Hardy teleport? Segment of the year, Thomas Polster said. Uh, Jericho yelling at Vanguard. Uh, mechanical cigars and a little bit of the bubbly in the gas tank. Right, Our Dub exactly. said. That was good shit when Jericho said that. Doug said the segment was great. Uh, he teleported multiple times. Uh... The ultimate opportunist that Moxley kicked out of the one wing angel. I don't remember that. I don't think he did, did he? In that match we saw for the pay per view, what was it? Full gear. I don't think he kicked out of that. Yeah, I don't think he kicked out of that. I'll have to go look for an ultimate opportunist. If you remember, send it to me though, because I'm I'm not sure when that happened. Uh, let's see here. Who's watching the Stardom tournament? <laughs> Prince Rockstar said I only watched round one. I have them all saved on my watch later right now. Uh, Prince Rockstar. So I do plan on watching it um and you gotta stay off social media if you don't want spoilers you know that's gonna happen regardless oh yeah definitely uh six said i love AEW, but matt teleporting into the stands was the cheesiest shit AEW has ever done thus far all right six so i gotta explain this to you like i said people when i first saw this said they were gonna hate it or love it so matt hardy's stuff is going to be super like gimmicky over the top stuff so he'll come out he may say oh it's the bucks of youth I knew you'd come. And he does all this silly stuff. Dude, he had Hurricane go into the Lake of Reincarnation. So basically, at his house, there's a big lake out there. They threw Shane Helms in there, and he came back as the Hurricane at one point, 
threw him back in. He came out as like Sugar Shane Helms, and then he came back out as Shane Helms from Three Count or whatever his name was, oh, yeah. Gregory Helms. Yes. Yeah, so, get yeah. up on your feet so, now. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't know what you're gonna get when you deal with Matt Hardy. So some of this stuff is gonna come off cheesy. You're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. That's the best way I can put it to you. I like it. Even him teleporting, I was laughing at it because I'm like, this is so ridiculous. It's it good. Is. It's no different than the Undertaker lights go out. I'm here. Now I'm here. Right, <laughs> like, so. all right, guys. But I thought it was funny with that. Um, let us get back to uh, this. <laughs> uh, thumbs up from Sick. The Ultimate Opportunist, two thumbs up. Prince Rockstar gives it a thumbs up as well. Uh, he also says, Bobby Lashley and EC3, look at where they're at in WWE. Valid point, sir. Exactly. Derek, your boy Bob Lashley. <laughs> He's a... <laughs> Bob! Malik Murray says, uh, do you guys think MLW is trash now or still good? And why don't they make uh, Ring of Honor on Thursdays? Ring of Honor is working on a new television deal from what I've heard in interviews with Joe Coff recently. It uh, sounds like they're trying to get one night a week where they're just going to be on that night no matter what. And it's going to be kind of like, uh, what do I want to call it? Like destination viewing. Like I would watch Ring of Honor if I knew it was going to be on at 8 o'clock on a Friday, maybe. You know what I mean? Like, you got to have a yeah. time frame versus I see it when I'm at work usually. Like, someone will have it on in the break room uh, at my old job. They would have it on. I'm like, oh, okay. Ring of Honor's on. Random. It, will, it would be on at, like, 9 o'clock you know, during yeah, a break. Yeah. like it, Or, like, freaking 12 o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. Like, wait a minute. I'm <laughs> out. Who's wrestling right now? <laughs> Um, MLW. I don't think MLW's trash. I feel like MLW's been poached for a lot of their talent. I mean, they still got great people. They got uh, Rich Holiday, Jacob Fatu, uh, the Von Eriks. You can go through Tom Lawler, whoever you want to name at this point. It doesn't matter. They're, they still have great talent there, and I think MLW is really trying to capture something, and I know they're looking for a television deal as well at the moment. So I'm not going to say trash, but Leek, I'm going to say that I think you should watch some MLW on Saturdays when they put the shows out i liked it better on mondays but apparently the numbers probably weren't doing as well so they moved it to a different day uh six said nah i love the woken matt hardy uh i'm just saying with the teleportation stuff and sick then wrote lashley with the bald head uh honestly i never really started saying bob lashley until rusev yeah i don't know why rusev started saying that shit he's still not on tv bro apparently not sad uh at least Robert Lashley is being used, Doug said. <laughs> um, and the ultimate opportunist brought up Bob Lashley. Oh, my God, I just said it again. Bobby <laughs> Lashley has a WrestleMania match against Aleister Black. And Six said Lashley's going to eat that foot. <laughs> yes. Well, well what's, what's this match for, though? Uh, I think it's just to have it. I think they're just trying to fill up the car with people. Because there are some people who are quarantined. Like Rey Mysterio and Dana Brooke, I read, cannot leave their houses i don't know if they're sick or they got some symptoms of it but they said they don't want them to leave so i guess all right we'll allow it right um i don't see any more questions popping up here uh can't wait to see baszler hit a 450 off the pc on becky I heard the PC might be shut down for part of it. I don't know if they have to record more tomorrow. I'm not looking at the spoilers for it. I'm going to try and watch WrestleMania and give you guys a proper review. Um, it's going to be different. It's going to be harder to do it. Usually we have a party and then we all like get together, review the show. But this is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be harder to talk about this. So No party. Yeah, social distancing. You know, We're practicing uh, safe stuff. Wash your damn hands. <laughs> and use soap and water, not this. All right? <laughs> Proven fact. Um, some people are just saying nothing, just a match. This is what we got to work with right now, people. Uh, this coronavirus shit is uh, killing us. It's uh, keeping everybody at home and everything else. But stay strong. Keep your heads up. Things will get better eventually. Um, who knows how long this is going to last for. But I do care about you guys, so if you guys are on Facebook, join the Everything Pro Wrestling Facebook group. Uh, like the official page as well. There's a link tree down below. If you guys haven't picked a podcast platform, pick one, man. Pick Spotify, pick Apple Podcasts, whatever you like, man. Listen to the podcast. We are out here trying to get some new things going for you. 
I, I got some good stuff coming up for you guys. I promise. I finally got something that I've been waiting for for a long time. Just trying to put some final tweaks on it. And hopefully I can get some help with some other things that I want to use that for. But I'll have to talk to my uh, tech people for YouTube for that. But this was a fun show tonight, man. I'm glad that we all got to talk about it. Discuss some pro wrestling. Live it up, man. I appreciate you guys. Um, I am not sure, Doug. I have not watched NXT yet fully, so... He asked who was the tag team on NXT tonight. I, I think it was for tonight. But not sure, Doug, who that was, who you're referring to. But listen, guys, we're going to end it here. Thank you so much for listening to Everything Pro Wrestling. It's a show by the fans, for the fans. And like I say every week, man, I couldn't do this without you guys. I appreciate the audience that we have here. Uh, thank you guys so much. With that, for me, Derek, peace. peace. Everything Pro Wrestling, it's your boys from the Everything College Basketball Podcast and Facebook group. I'm Josh Burton, letting you all know that if you like the college game, that there's only one spot to come find all you need to know. Yep, Josh, Peyton, and myself, Tyler, we are the three voices of ECB Podcast and Facebook group. Peyton, tell them where they can uh, find us and listen to us at. Well, Tyler, you can find us on Anchor, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and all other podcast hosting sites. Also, go join our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups like Everything College Basketball. So if you want everything you need to know about the collegiate game or have a passion for it, there's only one spot that you need to check out on a weekly basis or a daily basis with the Facebook group. That's Everything College Basketball. Now let's get back to Conrad informing you on everything pro wrestling and the workings around it. Brother. Are you looking for the newest and hottest in the world of pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 6,000 hours of the best events from over 150 of your favorite promotions from 20 different countries around the globe. Brands like Progress Wrestling, Evolve Wrestling, Combat Zone, Defy, PCW Ultra, PWX, Over the Top, Shine, and hundreds of others with fresh content added every day for only $5.99 per month. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv.